welcome and thank you for joining us on the Bujuzi Show. My name is Ehi Reden, I will be your host. Today we're going to talk about music and culture and the emerging ties between African and Caribbean culture. Today I have on the show a very good friend of mine, Adam Myrie. He's a spoken word artist as well as an African and Caribbean culture enthusiast. Thank you for joining us, Adam. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Okay, so my first first question for you today is how long have you been doing spoken word for? I've been performing spoken word since I was about six years old. Mm -hmm. And how did that come about? A lot of it occurred to my grandfather. Uh, he was an English teacher okay. and uh, very much had a love for the English language. Um, I also credit my early reading of Shakespeare. I, that was one of the first things I started reading when I was learning to read. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just got me started writing. Okay. Now, you, I know you are Caribbean, you're Jamaican by descent, uh, but, yeah. okay, but you do know a lot about African music. What would you say is the emerging ties, music-wise, between the African and Caribbean music? Well, a lot of it has to do with the, um, with the continuance of the slave culture. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the Caribbean still do practice the old African religions. A friend of mine is, still worships the old Yoruba gods and he's from the Dominican Republic. Mm. And so a lot of our music that we have now, soca music, um, reggae music, a lot of it comes, a lot of the rhythms that we have in our music comes from the old religious music. Right. So you'll hear beats like rumba, you'll hear beats like palo, and we, we'll put different names on it, but it's essentially the same rhythms. If you compare, um, for example, a, a, a song dedicated to the goddess Santa Banta from the Dominican Republic, it'll be almost identical to a song uh, to get dedicated to Oshun in in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So the, the similarities are definitely there. Okay. And in terms of food or language? A lot of our food is very much the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, we eat plantains, you guys eat plantains, right. uh, we eat yams, you eat yams. <laughs> I mean, generally all those things are, are very much the same. Mm -hmm. um, so the, and language-wise, uh, we have uh, very similar modifications of words that may be used in West African pigeon, for mm -hmm. example. In uh, West African pigeon, you guys will say pick, uh, pick in for a small child, yeah. and then for Jamaicans, they'll say pick me for a small child, mm -hmm. but it's, it all means the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now you think that, did that evolve, did it start from African, evolve into Caribbean, or how did that? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, the Africans that were imported through the slave trade have, were essentially brought West African culture or whichever country in Africa they were brought from mm -hmm. to the Caribbean, they all mixed together. And then you blend that with the European culture as well as some of the other cultures that came on later on, the Indians, the Chinese, the Arabs. Uh, you get this syncretic mix. Mm -hmm. But because the bulk of the population is of African descent and mostly West African descent, you find that is the largest influence in the development of the culture as you see it today. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Now, what would you say is the future of Caribbean music? To be honest, it's almost impossible to tell. Okay. I mean, the music that people are singing now is different from the music that they did 20 years ago mm -hmm. versus the music that was done 50 years ago versus 70 years ago. Um, especially since a lot of the great composers and the great singers are now dead. Um, Byron Lee, he, he died a few years ago. Lord Kitchener died almost mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Um, and so these are all some of the greater composers who really set the foundation for what Caribbean music is today. Um, but then on the other hand, people now are not thinking about the same things they did back then. Now, mostly everybody wants to basically wind up, get drunk and, right. and do whatever else. But back then they would tell a lot more stories, mm -hmm. there would be a lot more humor involved in it. And if they were gonna tell, uh, shall we say, something a little bit risque, they would oftentimes mask it in some sort of a metaphor. So mm -hmm. that is, it's, so now the music is a lot more direct and people aren't necessarily singing the same way that they used to. Mm -hmm. So that really, that bothers me. I would listen to the curve of music or what do you think? I would say that to a point, it feels like we are because some of the older styles of music, the old folk songs and everything else are not being sung the way they used to. Um, and for me, I think it's very important to maintain that, that chord, even if you don't necessarily sing the exact same songs the exact same way they did 20, 30 years ago, it's still important to at least remember that because you never know where you're going until you know at least where you've been. Right. And that, of course, will help maintain the, the flavor of the music and keep it from degenerating. Okay. So do you, do you find that they're getting more westernized? Is it, I don't know, is it a good idea to get more westernized? Like everyone wants to sing American music and we're forgetting about the actual curve of the Caribbean music or the African foundation. What would you say about that? At the end of the day, the African foundation is never going to go away. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was listening to this rap song the other day and the, and the actual drum beat in the rap song sounded like an African, sounded like a traditional African song dedicated to, I think, Shango. Mm -hmm. And I, I was kind of laughing because I'm like, really? Do they even know what they're playing in the song? <laughs> and you know, and it, it's it's almost like it's always going to be there in some way, shape, or form, just not necessarily in a form that 
is, that people would recognize as being that historical folkloric sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you play the drums, right? Yeah, I play the djembe. What would you say the similarities between, say, for example, the steel pan from Trinidad and the actual African drums? Well, the similarity is simply, in terms of rhythm. In terms of rhythm, uh, that's very, it's it's very difficult to put the, that same sound. I mean, they're both percussion instruments, and it both comes from that culture where essentially you take what you have and you make it into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, steel pen is actually a lot more like would be a lot a better comparison to something like a xylophone or a um, or a flute, simply because you actually play tunes on it, so you can actually. Play the play the notes that, that someone would be singing versus right. a djembe, which would be much more the bass rhythm or the uh, or the the the, 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 the drum beat mm -hmm. that basically leads the the pace of the song itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk, let's go back to just go to go back to your spoken word. What kind of what, what kind of things do you talk about as an artist? Do you get um when do you get your creative ideas? I talk about everything. Okay. Um, recently, last year, I've been focusing a lot more on storytelling. So I do a lot of research where I look into stories from ancient history, um, from my heritage and everything else. And basically what I end up doing is I rewrite that into a poem. Um, recently I wrote a poem that talks about the Maroon Wars in Jamaica. I wrote a poem about the Haitian slave rebellion. Um, I also write poems based on Aztec folklore. And then at the same note as well, I take that, uh, take some of the inspiration from classical Indian music because I'm a fan of that as well. And I use that, that, that type of language and the type of things I talk about, especially when it comes to love. And I use that as an inspiration for how do I formulate um, the, the poems that I'm going to be reciting. Mm. How do you get your ideas? Do you go to like a quiet place and just get inspired? How do you get inspired to write? It can come from anything. Okay. I mean, it can come from anything from, um, for example, the earthquake that happened in Haiti. I wrote a poem about okay. that. Um, to I see a pretty girl in the subway and I write a poem about her. And, Did you, you know, have a poem? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the book. She never knows I write it, obviously. Cause that would be just a strange way to put somebody up. But... Um, it, it could be anything. So I always carry my book of poems around with me and uh, just every time I get an idea, I'll scribble down, even if it's just two lines, I'll scribble it down and mm. maybe later on I'll, I'll, I'll write it into something larger later. Okay, so you get inspired from all different life experiences. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so you're going to perform something for us today? Yes. Uh, the poem I'm reciting today is called In Your Love I See God, mm -hmm. which essentially talks about the power of being in love for the first time or the power of be reaching that, that great love that you've that everybody talks about experiencing and you finally experience it. Where did you get the inspiration to write about love? Interestingly enough, I was listening to this song um, by this uh, composer from, the, from Suriname called Bijanu Mati Chaitori. And she wrote this song called um, Prem Rang Hamari, which is, um, it, it, it talks about love. I don't understand it entirely because my Bojpur is not very good. But um, basically that, 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 that language and the emotion in her voice is what inspired me to write that particular poem. Mm, okay, can we hear it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's hear Adam's poem then. All right. <clears throat> in your love I see God, come wrap me in your arms. I've waited so long, come wrap me in your arms. So blessed am I at your side that if I could choose in your arms, I would die. I see not the sun nor the moon in your eyes. I see the galaxies that ornament the sky. Your smile is the sunshine, draw me in your love's tide. Your smile is the sunshine, draw me in your love's tide, for I feel you inside. So kiss my cheeks and whisper sweet and hold my hand as if I make you complete. I've wandered this world aimlessly and now I've found the missing piece. So come love hold me, wipe my tears console me. Come love hold me, wipe my tears console me, set me free. Traveling your body is a pilgrimage, my devotion is all I can give. Your breath is the ocean breeze that lives, and you bless me when my name passes your lips. So love me, love me, bless me with your gift. Love me, love me, bless me with your gift. Without you, my soul's adrift, for in your love, I see God. Wow, good stuff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for blessing us with your gifts today, Adam. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. As you've heard on, um, with Adam, you never know where you're going till you know exactly where you're coming from. So thank you so much, Adam, for blessing us with your gift. It's, it's, it's good to always have you on the show. Thank you for watching the Bougies this year. Once again, you can check us out at www.tapikalife.com. Have a good day. What kind of music do you listen to? Oh, it generally consists of um, stuff 
uh, indie, indie rock, Brit rock. Now that it's big Brit invasion right now, so listen to that. Um, yeah, I guess you're alternative rock. Would you say the music now is depleting its current values as opposed to old school? A lot of the commercialized music has. It's all about like sex and things like that. Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Whatever's on the radio. Anything at all? You don't have a preference? Not really. Would you say music is losing its current value? Are we still carrying? Is music still carrying the message that it should? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. This. Unfortunately, I think the musicians that do. Um, other musicians that aren't getting through anymore. It's mass production, right? It's commercial. It's a commercial industry. It's not a music industry anymore. So whereas um, there used to be a mus musicians when they they made music, they made soul behind it. There was soul behind it in, in the music, right? Now it's you know you get people. It's all commercialized. It's, yeah. it, you don't even the people that are performing the music are getting calculated songs written for them. It's all calculated. It's nothing's. Nothing's actually, yeah, nothing's so full anymore. They don't write any of their own stuff. It's not like the Beatles. It's not like uh, Nina Simone. Who's, you know, there's just so, she didn't write all her, all her own songs, but just to her music, because she was soulful, and, and the people that wrote her music were soulful, is now that it's not happening anymore. It's, math, it's mathematics almost. These are the top 10 ways to relieve stress. Number 10, sleep. Get lots of sleep every day. Do doctors tell us we're supposed to get seven to eight hours of sleep a day. Please do that. Number nine, get a hobby. Do something you love to do. And when you do that, you will definitely be less stressed. Number eight, get a pet. A cat, a dog, a pigeon, a parrot, anything. Just get a pet, it would help you. Number seven, laugh. Laughter is very important. Don't take life too seriously. It's not that serious. Laughter is very, very, very good. Number six, watch your diet. So watch what you're eating, watch what you're getting into your system. Hopefully you're not getting something that's too high calorie. You're not getting diets that are not good for you. Number five, exercise. When you exercise, you get your metabolism going. Your body is very, very energetic and you're less stressed. Number four, learn to let go. Sometimes, some things in life you cannot control, you need to let it go. Number three, learn to control your reactions. So think before you act. Number two, set your priorities. Get your priorities right. When you do that, you would never ever be stressed because there's always something that's more important than something else and you can always plan. Number one, identify stressors. So there's some things that stress some of us more than the others. When you identify these things and acknowledge them, they will become less of a, they'll pose less of a stress to you. And most importantly, remember to stay a bourgeois. Have a good one.